Today I'm going to share with you some tips that I currently use as a doctor, that I use as a medical student to wake up really early in the morning at hours like 4.30 or 5.30, but still not feel tired for work or for school. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Lux. I'm a doctor who on this channel as well as this podcast make tips to make your life as a student a little bit easier. So if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. If you enjoy the content, then make sure you show your support by hitting that like button as well. But today I want to talk about waking up early and how to do it without feeling tired for school or for work. And you may have a sour taste in your mouth when it comes to topics about waking up early because maybe you've tried it and you weren't able to do it successfully or consistently. But in this video, I'm going to show you a few ways you can use to overcome it. So as a quick backstory, when I was a medical student in my second year, I had started the MD journey as a blog post and I was putting different challenges that I would do for like 20 days at a time. One of the first ones that I did was I asked myself to wake up at 4.30 for 20 straight days and try to see if I could build it as a habit. Before this, I was waking up anywhere from like 6.30 to 7, so still early, but like by no means 4.30 early. When I initially started, there was a huge bit of motivation because I was getting work done, I felt great, I could report back on my blog post and the four people that were reading it that it was successful. But towards the middle of the 20 days, it was hard. You know, it was hard to wake up. It's hard to find that motivation. And then you definitely have that natural sensation of tiredness and fatigue towards the middle of the day because you've gotten up a few hours early. But as I was going through the challenge, I tested out different techniques that I was learning online. And eventually I was able to get to a point where I was motivated to get up at 4.30. I was getting stuff done. By the middle of the day where I typically would hit a low amount of energy, I was still energized to do even more work if I chose to. And keep in mind that was my second year of medical school. I'm still waking up at those kinds of hours currently and I'm able to do different projects like work on the YouTube channel, work on my blog, as well as various other things that I enjoy doing. So today I want to give you a few tips I personally use in my own life as a physician to help me become more productive to get up early without having that tired sensation later on. So the first thing that I found to be really effective at waking up early but also energized is to wake up your most optimal times. Now our body naturally cycles between a variety of sleep stages, some being very light and some being very deep. But the problem of having a specific wake up time every single day is that you can't always direct what phase of sleep you'll be waking up into. And so if you wake up in something that's very light, it's going to feel very natural to get up. But on the flip side, if you wake up at a much deeper phase of your sleep cycle, you're much more likely to want to go back to sleep or at least feel groggy if you do choose to get up. And so a few great ways to help yourself wake up at a very optimal hours are trying some sleep cycle timer apps that you can find out on iOS or Android. I'll link a few down below because I've kind of flipped back and forth myself, but they're great kind of tools that you can use using the accelerometer come with your phone to just kind of put it on your bedside table or on your bed face down and essentially can sense your motion as your sleep to try to figure out what kind of phase of your sleep cycle you are and you can increase your chances of waking up at a lighter phase of your sleep by using the app and dictating essentially what range you would like to wake up on so maybe it's 4 30 to 5 or 5 30 to 6 and then the app will do its thing and it'll try to wake you up at a time that's most optimal for you and as a bonus tip just waking up doesn't mean you're going to necessarily get out of bed and so one of the things that i like to do is something that i call the five second rule that i've learned through a variety of self-improvement books but basically the idea is is you essentially count down from five, four, three, two, one. And that one, you basically kind of make yourself jump out of the bed. It's a little bit silly when you first start, but your likelihood of getting out of bed just increases versus trying to press the snooze button and saying that in five minutes, I'll get up. We all know how that goes. Tip number two is to try to have a motivating task as soon as you wake up. I remember when, even when I reflect back to my morning routine as a medical student, I'll link down below a vlog where I did of this situation. I would have a lot of things going on. I would have to do a reflection journal, a meditation, gratitude, and also find time to work out. And it simply just started to become a little bit overwhelming. And so now I simply try to have one thing that I do each morning, whether that be working on a video project for the MD journey or doing some research projects for residency. Now, obviously it's very important that you find something that's motivating and not just something that's on your to-do list. So if you're not motivated to review your lectures in the morning, but you are to get a workout and both of them happen to be your to-do list, then try to fit your workout in as soon as you get up. Now tip number three is to have good nighttime hygiene. It doesn't matter if you're using the apps to help yourself wake up at an optimal time or if you're really motivated to get up, it's much more likely that you'll feel tired if you don't get adequate amount of sleep. So you find what that is for you. For me, it's about like six and a half hours for other people and maybe eight to nine hours. But make sure you're not shortchanging yourself on average over the week on your sleep just to wake up a little bit early. And in addition, make sure you're using the bedrooms for things that are appropriate and not for things like looking on your phone or wasting time on social media as you're getting close to bed. Instead, things like just actually going to sleep or reading a book and staying away from any type of screens can really make it much more likely 
you're gonna go straight to sleep. For me, I find that it's very easy to go to sleep, but I also find that my environment is conducive to it. We don't have a TV in our bedroom. I try not to spend a lot of time on my phone before bed. And it's just very easy to not. Step number four is really effective, and that's to watch what you're eating and taking in before you go to bed as well as when you wake up. We have a tendency, especially in a Western diet, to eat very carb-heavy meals around dinner time and also a tendency to do the same during breakfast time. But if your body doesn't necessarily need that energy while you're going to sleep, I try to keep my dinners as carb-free as possible, but that's kind of hard. I love carbs. So it's important to kind of reflect back on what you're eating for dinner as you're about to go into a six to eight hour hiatus. It's very likely that you don't need a huge carb-heavy meal for dinner. Um, and the same thing goes for breakfast, especially if you're about to wake up and you're not going to exert yourself. You don't have a morning workout um, and you still have a good amount of glycogen storage left. I personally will just go ahead and have, you know, an iced coffee this morning and then wait till later on in the day around 11 or 12 to have my first true meal where my body actually can use that little bit of energy. And the flip side of this is eating a huge meal for breakfast and then having all of your body's energy go towards digesting it where you could be using it for very productive times. And just because I wake up early doesn't mean I don't take advantage of tip number five, which is to have a midday nap if you're able to. I made a video, which I'll link down below, of something called a caffeine power nap, which is an effective scientific backed, you know, 20 minute nap that you can do, especially if you're somebody who loves drinking coffee and or tea. So I'll link that down below. But whenever possible, if you do come back home as a student to study and you find that the hours in the afternoon are probably not that productive for you in the first place, for me they weren't, I would instead replace them with a 20 minute kind of refreshing nap or up to an hour. I still do it in residency when my schedule allows for me to come home and work from home. Um, but otherwise, I just have to kind of be a little bit more mindful of how much sleep I get every day. So those guys are the various different ways that I use to wake up early and make sure I'm energized, but also keep my energy consistent and high throughout the day. If you guys did enjoy this video, let me know by hitting that like button to just share it with me that you enjoy this piece of content. Drop any questions that you guys have down below about anything regarding being a student, studying, waking up early. Be happy to make a vlog if you guys are interested. Um, and if you haven't and you somehow made it to the end of the video, consider hitting that subscribe button. We're putting out two videos just like this one each and every week. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll link down below a few playlists and blog posts that you guys can check out. Um, but I appreciate you guys joining me on this channel on my journey. Hopefully I've been a little help to you on yours. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.